Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Osni Marcus on behalf of the uh, Tony Drummond, my colleague here, who will be speaking a little bit later, and also the speakers that uh, are going to join us during this four-day uh, workshop. I'd like to welcome you to, to Berkeley. Uh, in these uh, remarks, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what the United States Department of Energy is about and some of the activities we have here at the Computational Research Division, the lab. Um, so this, uh, the, the U.S. Department of Energy, that's, of course, funded by, um, you know, with taxpayer uh, money, some of you, your money. So uh, there are 17 laboratories spread around the country, and the mission is to ensure America's security and prosperity by addressing energy issues and uh, environment and nuclear challenges. And in order to do this, uh, in all those 17 laboratories, there is a lot of research in do being done in physics, chemistry, uh, mathematics, um, uh, 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 computer science, and others. Uh, so 17 laboratories, as I said, the ones that are indicated with red, marked with red dots, uh, those are the laboratories that have, uh, we are going to have colleagues from those laboratories giving presentations during the week. There is also another Samir from the University of Oregon, which is not a laboratory, but it's, uh, it's going to be uh, represented here as well. So then the, labor, the, the people, our colleagues from the other labs, those are from Argonne, Lawrence Berkeley, just up, up the hill, Lawrence Livermore, uh, not far from here, Pacific Northwestern and uh, Northwest and also Sandia. So again, 17 laboratories in total. Uh, so uh, in uh, one of the, so the, the Department of Energy has a number of offices. Uh, and the one that has been funding this a uh, series of uh, workshops is the Advanced Science, Scientific Computer Research Program. And uh, so the research, the, basically this program has two, two, it's, it has two branches. The research division and the facilities division. Starting with the bottom, the facilities division is where we have the big computers. Uh, uh, Oak Ridge, Argonne, and Nash the, uh, NERSC, National Energy Research Scientific Computing Center. And this is the, these are the computers that you'll be using later on or during the week for your hands-on. Going to the top, the, the research division has a computer science component, an applied mathematics component, next generation network, and also the SIDAC program, which is a, a program that puts together applications and the mathematics and the my computer science tools uh, that are needed in order to have the applications in physics, chemistry, and uh, uh, you know, we're talking about big simulations here. So, uh, what the, has been accomplished through the years uh, uh, um, in this program is, you know, this is a sample of the various applications that have made the cover of nature, science, and so on. Uh, uh, and also all the reports that have been put together with the input from the community addressing the, addressing the needs for computing, uh, computing power uh, and, uh, and mathematical and computer science tools. Um, so uh, in what concerns our computation research division uh, here at the lab, just where, um, okay. So here, the, our computation research division, our colleagues from other labs, will, if they wish, they will have an opportunity to tell a little more about what they uh, have been working on on their labs. But here in our concerns, Berkeley lab, the computational science uh, 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 directorate actually has two branches, the applied mathematics and computer science. And uh, uh, here we address problems in combustion, climate, energy, and environment, cosmology, and genomics, right? In applied mathematics, there, is, there are mathematical models that are being developed, uh, adaptive mesh refinement techniques, libraries, uh, and also linear algebra tools. And computer science, there is work on performance and auto-tuning, this cloud computing, right? That's becoming more and more popular visualization and high-performance computer architectures and so forth. So uh, talking a little bit about the National Energy Research Scientific Computing Center, as I mentioned, you are going to be using the, uh, one of the computers of the center. It's, uh, now, it's not the largest computer in the country, uh, this one, Hopper. It's a big Cray XE6 with 153,000 uh, cores. But what is 
uh, 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 specific to this machine, it's the machine that perhaps has the largest number of users in the country. There are, uh, I don't even remember, how many projects do you, uh, Harvey? About 4,000 users and 500 projects. So about 4,000 users and 500 projects running on this big gray machine and also some of the other uh, computers uh, that are actually in downtown Oakland because of a lack of space here in the hill of the lab. Yes, we're going to be talking a, a little more about this later. So you will be using this machine here, Carver, for your hunt zone later today and uh, during the week. Yes, sir. Yeah, so Hopper, I forgot her first name, actually. Grace, Grace Hopper, she was with the Navy uh, in, the, in the past, and she's, uh, she has passed already, of course. And she, was, um, she got to a very high rank in the U.S. Navy, and she was... She basically, you know, brought computing into the Navy, uh, you know, for the needs there uh, for the West Navy. And she uh, was a big promoter of computer, and then this gray was named after her. She invented the first compiler. Yes. Yeah, thank you for, yes, for this uh, uh, very nice addition. Uh, one thing that we have here at NERSC, given, so, so you are going to get a, a, a guest accounts for the time that you are here. And the accounts will remain open for a, a couple of weeks. But one thing that you can do afterwards, if you feel there is a need in your research for computing resor resources, you can apply for a startup account. I don't remember how many hours you get. It's basically free, right? It's basically, there is a, a review process, but it's very simple. It's basically done internally for uh, smaller locations, a small amount of time. So if you'd like to you know, do more experiments, if you have a parallel code that you'd like to, to try on these computers that we have here, you are uh, welcome to apply for these startup accounts that, as I mentioned, it's, uh, they are straightforward. They're not very complicated. To, uh, it's not a very complicated process to apply. And if you are in interested, please you know, ask us and. Uh, and we can give you pointers and more information about how to apply for these accounts. Uh, so over the years, this is the 13th workshop that Tony and I organize here. We have also organized events in other venues, in other conferences and so forth. Uh, you have uh, this presentation uh, in the USB memory stick, if it's not very clear here on the screen. So this is basically a pie chart that shows, you know, the participants of the, the, these workshops, you basically, where, you know, uh, the participants come from, the areas of research. You can see there, there a, a big chunk of that pie chart comes from uh, people working on computational fluid dynamics. At least this is how they have identified themselves. When you submit your application, you tell us, I, have been, I work on this or that field. So we take, basically take that input from you, and that's how we generate this kind of a uh, pie chart. There are, of course, people that working on uh, astrophysics and uh, applied mathematics and so forth. And so the idea here is to, um, with this workshop, is then to, you know, to tell you what are the tools uh, 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 that uh, have been developed with DOE funding and also funding from other agencies like the National Science Foundation that uh, people can use to, uh, to write parallel and efficient and portable codes, okay? So this is basically the, full, full, the chart. And over the years, we have, I think Tony may have more accurate numbers. We have um, about, what, 500, uh, over 500 people, students and postdocs, and even faculty and people also, representatives from industry, attending this, this kind of event, okay? Uh, so uh, uh, at some point, actually the form, this is the form that would like you to, to feel at some point during the workshop. Uh, basically, it's a way for us to, to improve uh, uh, this kind of event that we organize. So then there, in this form, would like you later during the week to, to tell us, you know, if there are presentations that you think we could include in the program or the hands-on things that worked or not worked as expected. Okay, so this kind of feedback from you that would like to have in order to make things better in uh, future events. And also, it's something that we can show to our 
to our uh, to the people in Washington D.C. People that send money to us here, to, to you know people that sponsor us. So it's an opportunity for us to 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 show them. Well, this is what we have been doing. You know, that's okay. Uh, uh, so now I'm going to borrow. So now uh, there is a, a colleague of ours, uh, uh, Richard Gerber. That's his web address. He has put a very nice set of slides together, and I, here I just took three. It's a very nice set of slides, as I said. And uh, uh, in this set of slides, we can start by asking this question: Who uses high-performance computing? H HPC, right? Uh, scientists and engineers uh, um, for uh, you know working on climate prediction, protein folding, oil and gas discovery, financial forecasting, and you can add your application there you know in the bullet. So that lo lots of people is using HPC these days. It's not only uh, 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 people in the laboratories or in, in academia. Okay, and also there are corporations using uh, 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 HPC as well, uh, like uh, for customer recording customer you know, data, or for inventory management, uh, you may have heard about this list, the top500.org, the list you know, of the most performing uh, 500 computers in the world. Uh, talking about inventory management, uh, all greens used to have a, big, a computer in the list, uh, you know, the pharmacies. So they, have the, they had this Linux cluster, big cluster, I think, to, to manage their, you know, the list of things that they have in the, the store. Also, you know, uh, uh, you can use HPC to keep, uh, uh, you know, to uh, information about employees and so forth. So that's it's not only these days for uh, uh, engineering or or, or 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 scientific purposes anymore. Now, why use supercomputing? And here I'm going to show you two tables. The first one, again, courtesy of our colleague Richard. Uh, in this table, first you can take a look. You can think about it, uh, space, right? Uh, uh, kind of more uh, in terms of length, and the phenomena associated with that a uh, particular scale, starting from something very small, ten to the mi minus eighteen meters, okay, going to through ten to the minus nine. That would be in the nanometer scale, going up to the ten to twenty fourth meters, which is of course a very big, very long. Um, scale here. For example, this very small scale here, you have the quarks, the strings, and at this a little bigger, you have the proton and the neutron. And at very large scales, you have our galaxy, right? The, the distance to the Andromeda galaxy. And also, this is, the, say, the size of the universe. But here, there is only this range, you know, in this table, in this is, there is only, these are the only scales that we basically we have some direct experience with. Okay, so this is something that if we think about, we can have a grasp. Basically, that would be, you know, the bacteria. We kind of, it's a small, but we still we can think about it. A mosquito or a golf ball, people at this scale, the Mount Everest here or the Panama Canal. So for all the other scales, we need something like a simulation, a computer simulation, if we, if we li would like to have, to, to, to have some information about it. It's some, something that we don't have a direct. Uh, experience about. So we need some sort of computing or computer modeling, right? We need some simulations in order to to get some um, information about those phenomena. Okay. So that's in a kind of a, uh, so that's in a, 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 another way of looking at, looking at this is in terms of time scale. Okay. We have a, a, a meters in, in the previous table. Uh, uh, here we have a temporal scale, right? Uh, and uh, similarly to the previous, we can think about very small time scale here, like 10 to the minus 44 seconds. So that would be the Planck time for the physicists that we are here. <laughs> I don't know much about it. Uh, also 10 to the minus 24 light crosses nu the nucleus. So that's the scale we're talking about. Going up to the table, we have something like 10 to the 15th. That's the rotation that, you know, the, the time that our galaxy takes to rotate. Uh, and 10 to the 17th, that's the age of the universe. And again, there is, there is a range here in the middle of the scale, uh, in the middle of the tables, things like from 10 to the minus 3 seconds up to the 10 to the 9th. Uh, uh, so that's where we have some experience with. Okay, starting, say, like uh, the hard disk seek time or the blink of an eye, right? 
up to the human lifespan. This is something that we, we can think about it and, you know, we, uh, we have a direct, uh, ex you know, feeling about it. All the others, we need some sort of comp some modeling, uh, some sort of a computer simulation if you want to, to do, st you know, to study those phenomena. So that's, that, that, that's the idea here. So then the two tables just to illustrate why, you know, the uses of supercomputing super is, is relevant, is important. Uh, any questions? Then those were my slides. Thank you for your attention. And Tony is going to be the next speaker.